Hey everyone, so this is going to be part 2 of our car and uh, roadblock game. And in this part we're going to be checking for a collision as well as adding a scoreboard. So the first thing we want to do uh, in our previous code is we want to create a block class for our blocks. And we can do that right above our player class. So we can create class block, create function, def init, self, x, y, with and the height as parameters, and the x and y is the coordinate, and the width and the height is the size of the block, so the dimensions of the block. So set self.x is equal to x, self.y is equal to y, self.width is equal to width, and self.height is equal to height. We can create another function, uh, define draw with the parameters of self and wn. And here we can basically draw our block. So pygame.draw direct wn. Uh, the color is red. And self.x, self, self. Dot y, self. Dot with self dot height self dot yeah and now in our game loop to actually call this function uh, we can go to game loop here at the top of our game loop we can create our values so block block height or no block width is equal to 80 pixels block Height is equal to 20 pixels. Uh, block x. Because we want to set x at a random position, we can use the random module that we input up for right here. Uh, is equal to random random dot rand range west b east b minus block or my yeah minus block width. And then we can set block y is equal to 100 pixels. And then right below our player, block is equal to our block class with our values. So with our parameters, block x, block y, block width, and block height. Alright. So now, a little, we just have to add in our while loop, we can call block.draw. So block.draw. So if we save this, and run it. Uh, let's see. Block.draw. Oh, that's right. This should probably be... Right, this should be uh, right before the pie game dot display update. So let's see. Yep, good. So now we have a red rectangle, but it's not moving yet. It's not doing anything. It's just sitting there. So let's actually uh, allow it to actually move forward and drop. So in our block class right here. We can create another value, self dot speed y is equal to five, and create another function. And this function will basically allow it to move. So define update self and self dot y. We want to change the y value of this block. Is equal to the previous self dot y plus self dot speed y. And in our game loop over here uh, let's see right after our player update we can update our block so block dot update so if we save this and run it we should notice that the block is moving downwards which it is so that's good except now you see that the block doesn't go back and it doesn't respawn so that's also a problem 
let's see, let's go down here. And we want to check basically if the block reaches the bottom of the window. If it does, we want it to basically move back to the top of the window. So here in our update function of our block, we can check boundaries or of the block. Yeah, check the block boundary. So if self.y is greater than the window height, then we want self.y is equal to zero minus self.height. And we want to, again, we want to change, or not really change, we want to set the x value to another random value. So, uh, so that x is equal to random, that rand range, west boundary, east boundary minus self dot width. So, we can save this, and hopefully it moves back to the top when it reaches the bottom the bottom and which it does and you also notice that it's at a different x location every time because it's random now that we have that um right in our game loop instead of setting the y value of the block to 100 we should probably set it to negative 100 because when i set it to uh 100 initially the block is yeah, this block spawns somewhere over here in the middle. So if we set it to negative 100, it will start at the bottom. And then with the if statement that we created before, it will automatically move to the top. So we could save that and set this to negative 100. And now we want to basically, now that we have that, we want to check if the block crashes with the car. So we can create a crash function. So above our game loop, Game loop right here. Define crash. And when the uh, player, so the car and the box collide, we want to display something like you crashed, you lose, something like that. So font is equal to pygame.font dot font none size 80. Text is equal to font dot render. Uh, you crashed something like that true and set the color to black you can set the width of the font so text I mean, yeah text dot width is equal to text dot get width text dot get width and text height is equal to text.get height x is equal to int window width over 2 over 2 minus text width over 2 and y is equal to int window height over 2 minus text height over 2 and then we want to blit this, so we want to blit text x y, and we want to display it. So pygame dot display dot update. And when we do display it, we want the program to basically sleep for two seconds, and we can use the time module that we imported at the top to pause the program for two seconds. So time dot sleep for two. And we can call the game loop at the end. So before we move on to more code, let's talk about how we're gonna detect collision. Here, this graph, the yellow block represents our car, our player. And this blue block represents our obstacle. And so how do we detect a uh, collision? Well, uh, first of all, on the X coordinate, we first check if the right side of our player is greater than the left side of our block and the left side of our player is less than the right side of our block. So uh, this code down here is basically just representative of what I just said. So if player.rect.right, so if this right side of our player is greater than the left side 
of our block. So if this right side is on the right of this uh, left side of the block, and player.rec.x, the left side of our player is the less than uh, block.x plus block.width, so the right side of this block, that means um, on the x coordinate, then the block is colliding with the player. But now we have to check for the y coordinate. So in the y coordinate, if block.y plus block.height, which basically represents the bottom part of this block, if this part is greater than uh, player.rec.y, which is the top part of a player, then that means that this bottom part of our block is below this top part of their player. And that is basically colliding with the player. And you also need to check if the top part of the block is less than the bottom part of our player. And this basically means that the top part of our block is above the bottom part of the player. So if both of these conditions are true, well then, uh, on the Y coordinate, the block is colliding with the player. And in order to fully collide, both of the conditions in the X coordinate and Y coordinate need to be true. So now that we have both these ideas in our mind, we can go back and try to implement them in our code. Pull up our code and see how we can actually use this. Um, let's see. In our game loop right here, yeah, we can actually just check. So we can actually check if they crash. So using the logic that we that I just explained, check if the player dot rect dot right is greater than the block dot x, and player dot rect dot x is less than block dot x plus block dot width. So this is checking the x value. Now we can check the y value. So if block dot y plus block dot height is greater than player dot rect dot y and block dot y is less than player dot rect dot bottom then we want to crash so call the crash function that we created before and if I run this hopefully we'll actually crashed and what you did so nice you crashed uh, yeah and now you can actually try to dodge this you can try to dodge it yeah, that's good and now let's create a little scorekeeper so to keep track of how many you've dodged and our block function or block class not function create a value so self dot dodged is equal to zero and in our update function right here so this basically, this if statement again checks if, uh, checks the boundary of the block, so if the block is above the window height. And if the block basically passes the player, we want to increase the dodge value. So self.dodged is equal to the previous self.dodged plus one. And then we want to create a function. So scoreboard, that's actually going to show our values. So define scoreboard dodged and font is equal to pygame dot font dot font none size 25 text is equal to font dot render and it's going to render the dodged value the dodged value here plus string dodged true and set the color to black and then we can split this to the screen so split the text zero zero so now in our uh, function in our update function, our game loop function right here, uh, we can show the scoreboard. So score board block dot dodged. Cool. And let's run this. 
okay we, on the top left you see we have a dodge value and as we actually dodge the things you notice that the dodge value increases I crashed and the dodge value resets back to zero so that's good so this is basically the end of this uh, little series and I'll see you guys in the next series and or video.